Hi. You've heard a million times Matthew 7 1. Judge not that you be not judged. But you do it anyway. Uh, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Often we pass judgment on ourselves so severely that it cripples our ability to try anymore or to have faith that we're qualified to ask for anything. We must learn to judge ourselves gently. Unless we judge ourselves gently, then we'll do it too harshly, and we apply no lesser standard as we appraise other people. Before we judge ourselves too harshly, let us consider the circumstances under which we all find ourselves. You're living in a world reacting to the effects which have resulted from causes, causes and effects, that you did not create. It started in the Garden of Eden where a major mistake was made. And we reap the effects of this initial cause today. To some extent we were all raised to be selective in our sensitivity to the needs of others. We judge some people as being most worthy of compassion and others as just junk human beings. I know in my race we sometimes refer to one another as white trash, <laughs> which we shouldn't do. I was not a perfect parent, but neither were my parents. Consider that their parents weren't either. We can carry this analogy back just about as far as we wish. Perfect parents didn't raise Cain and Abel, and no one else has had perfect parents either. All of this constitute causes that have had effects with an endless ripple effect. You did not have perfect grandparents, perfect neighbors, perfect job associates, perfect teachers, perfect preachers, perfect Sunday school teachers, and the list goes on and on. Any faulty input from these persons created effects which are with you possibly even today. Therefore, as you judge yourself, take these things into account. As you judge yourself, consider that much, very much of your life has been resultant from your reaction to causes created by other people. The sins of a few are vested upon the many. I'll say that again. The sins of the few are vested upon the many. One of the most classic examples of that is in within the last year or so, one man was caught on an airplane with a bomb in his shoe which fortunately they caught before he could activate it. Now, because of the actions of this one man, this, this one cause, every time you go to board an airplane, you have to take off your shoes. Not only you, but tens of millions of people a year are taking off their shoes. Well, this adds to the cost of the ticket because you have to pay those personnel to check all this stuff. You have to Pay, the government has to pass on taxes pertaining to it, all because of the sins of one man. And to me, this is an excellent example of a cause creating an effect. As we consider the matter of judging not, we must take into account, first of all, that to an extent, we are the victims of causes enacted by others, both historical, historically, and even in the present moment. People who you might judge have been affected in the same way that you have. It becomes more apparent why we should not presume to judge other people. Only they themselves and God knows the effects from causes which have come their way and which they're having to deal with. It's best to judge yourself gently and discontinue being selective in the matter of choosing to whom you will have mercy. And when the Bible we're taught to love all men and to judge not. And when you consider the mess we're all in, it becomes a little easier to follow these commandments. We, we create causes ourselves and reap the effects. And 
since we've reaped what we sow, it's better to start sowing some good causes that's going to give you a little better set of effects along the way. So judge yourself gently, please, for you are the victim of much, very much. Consider that your neighbor and those who you encounter are victims no less than you are. Learn to love yourself with a tender mercy and then it'll be a whole lot easier for you to judge others gently too. Think about it.